Hey there, everybody, and welcome. Today, I'm going to present a quick playthrough, a solo playthrough, of a little game that I just came upon. It's a print-and-play game currently, although it's about to be published. But uh, I will, in the show notes, I'll give you a link to the... Uh, uh, to the forum on BGG, where if you if you want, you can go ahead and uh, create your uh, uh, your own print and play. This is very simple. There are very few components involved. So uh, while the game is simple, it's one of those games that is real challenging and and brain burnery um, if you really want to try to do well at it. And it takes a work uh, takes a fair amount of uh, play to get halfway decent. I would say um, I've had to play it a lot. Uh, until I saw my scores start to rise. Anyway, let's take a look and see what the components, what's involved. So there are only nine cards in the deck. They are double-sided, and each of the cards consists of a combination of three different kinds of trees. There are pear trees, which are yellow, apple trees, which are red, and plum trees, which are purple. Um, although you may look at that and say blue, but to me that's more of a purplish or violet color, I guess. So I'm going to call I'm going to probably call it purple. But there are only three trees you have to deal with: uh, yellow, red, and purple. And like I said, there's only nine cards as far as co uh, components are concerned. They are double sided, but you're only using one side of any one card uh, during one play of the game. This is a strictly solo game only. What you're trying to do is get you when you place these cards, they have to overlap with at least one other card on the table, and you want to match uh, tree colors when you overlap. In fact, with a, with an exception or two, which I'll explain later, you have to match tree colors. So, for example, I could take this card. Now I could rotate it any way I want. Any you know, 90 degrees is 180, uh, 270, uh, but I can't flip it over to use the other side. I'm strictly working with this side. So I could put it here, except for the fact that the yellow on the bottom there doesn't match the red. Um, if I rotate and bring it over here, then I can match and overlap the blue tree, the purple tree, and the yellow tree, the, uh, the pear tree. When you do overlap trees, and as, like I said, with, with, uh, um, there is an exception, but generally speaking, you always have to overlap identically colored trees. When you do overlap trees um, early on and you haven't placed any dice yet, you take a uh, a dice matching the color of the tree and place it on the trees where you've overlapped and matched, setting the dice to ones. Now, uh, aside from the nine cards that you're working with, there are 15 dice you need, five in each of the three colors, five red, five yellow, five purple. That's all you have to work with. And you should also have a couple of black cubes standing by. So, as I said, if I placed uh, this card here, which is perfectly legal, I would put a purple die on the, on the plum tree and a yellow die on the pear tree, both set to one, and I would have already scored two points, because your score is going to be the sum of all the uh, dice that are currently uh, showing on the cards. When you overlap a tree that already has a die on it, if it's set to one, it gets bumped up to a three. So that's going to make your score even better. And then if you overlap a, a tree that already has a die on it set to a value of three, it gets bumped up to a six. So there are only three values of dice that you have to ever worry about. One, which is the basic match. Then if you match again, you get a three. And if you match it the third time, you, you get bumped up to a six. If you match a fourth time on that tree, nothing's going to change, obviously. The die can't go any higher than six. And, of course, you can't place more than five of, uh, dice of any one color uh, as you're playing the game. So even if you do overlap, say, a purple tree with a purple tree, if you've already used all of your purple dice, you're not going to be able to put a die there, and therefore you're not going to be able to score. 
that's pretty much it. It's it's a very simple game, but it, it like I said, if you want to do well, you really got to look at the patterns and and as obviously as more and more cards get placed, it gets trickier and trickier to find the best uh, the best uh, placement to get the best to uh, generate the best score. Now I did say there are exceptions to matching trees twice during the game. You could take one of these black cubes. If you don't match, let's say um, let's say I wanted to place this card. Obviously, I wouldn't. But let's say I rotated it and I want to place it here. Now I would get a die on the red uh, set to one, and I'd get a die on the purple set to one. But the yellow doesn't match with the red, so that's a that's called rotten fruit. So when you have a rotten fruit situation where the colors don't match. If you have one of these black cubes available, you can take the black cube and place it on that non-matching tree. Unfortunately, the black cube is going to subtract three points from your final score. And like I said, you only have two black cubes, so you're only able to do this uh, twice during the game. It could be on the same card. So, for example, uh, I don't know, um, just as a, a silly example, let's say I tried to match... The, put this card here, matching the yellow on the top, but obviously I'm not matching the red with the purple, nor am I matching the purple with the yellow. Uh, therefore, I, I would get a yellow die um, on the top right tree there, the, uh, yeah, the plum tree, but I'd get a black cube on the red apple tree in the center, and I'd get a black cube on the lower plum tree. If that's not bad enough, if a tree, if a card has rotten fruit on it, basically a black cube on it, you can no longer overlap that card. You can't take another card later in the game and try to place it anywhere on top of that card. The card is now off limits. So that's, if, if losing the three points per cube wasn't bad enough, not being able to overlap that card really limits your choices. So... Clearly, um, you want to try to avoid having to use these black cubes or only use them if the positive score, the net score you're going to get from that placement uh, outweighs basically the, the, uh, the cons of losing some points and, and not being able to uh, overlap that card any longer. So generally speaking, when I'm playing this game, I really try to avoid having to use these black cubes unless it's really late in the game and I don't care and I just want to eke out another point or two. Um, or if I see a situation where I'm going to be able to match up a couple of sixes, for example, uh, so that my net gain from the card might be a, a, two, a three going up to a six, a three going up to a six, and one black cube, so I get a net gain of three points. Three plus three minus three. So that's basically how the game works, and you're trying to get your best score, and let me pull up the rules here. Anything below 25 is not so hot. If you consider yourself pretty good at this game, you really need to be able to get up to at least the mid-30s, I would say. Mid to high 30s is pretty good. You could see that it's uh, all these these puns are actually pretty adorable. So if you get to the mid-high 30s, you get a score of remarkable. And if you get to 40 to 44, your score is considered tremendous. And I will say that's about as good as I've gotten so far. Um, I've had to play a lot of games to get halfway decent at this, i got to say. And I've not getting up, gotten up to the plum believable or, or certainly the pretty perfect level yet. Maybe one day, but um, as it stands, I still have a fair amount of work to, to do. Um, like I said, it's um, early on when you're playing. There are only so many combinations, so um, it's pretty easy. But once you're getting to your eighth or seventh or eighth card placement, lots of combinations to look at. And it's pretty easy to miss a really high scoring opportunity. So that's where you got to um, work at a little bit and try to have an eye for this sort of thing. 
Um, I am not going to uh, bore you by just you watching me think, so I'm going to try to uh, play this pretty quickly. I suppose I could pause if I wanted to think a little harder, um, but uh, generally speaking, I'm going to try to keep the video live, so therefore, I don't know, maybe my score won't be as good as it might otherwise be. But I hope I don't completely embarrass myself. Uh, I'd like to, I really would like to hit 40 if possible, but uh, who knows, that just may not be, that may not work out. So anyway, that's the way this game works. There's only, there's, the first card is placed already on the center of the table. I've got two cards in my hand, and there's only, remember, there were only nine cards on the deck, so there are only six cards remaining, so there, this this game, unless I think really uh, take a lot of time to think, is, is going to go by pretty quickly. So, first of all, the best I could do would be to match red, blue, red, or yellow, blue, yellow. And I don't see any of those combinations here, so I'm not going to be able to match three sides. So, best I can do, I've already shown you that I could place this here and match two and get two points. Um, However, looking ahead, because I have this other card, is that going to help me with this other card? Uh, nothing jumps out at me as being especially good. Uh, what if I rotate this? Is there anything I can work with? Well, like I said, I got that. That also scores me two points. And then I've got... Uh, see, i got a lot of doubles on this. Double reds, double blues, double yellows. But... Uh, I don't see anything jumping out real quickly. What if I use this card? Um... I could do that. Oh, now I've got... Does that help me? With the other card. Um, well, I see a yellow-red. Eh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I've got three possible placements I saw so far. They all look pretty much about the same. I'm just going to go ahead and place this one right here. So this is going to get me a purple die where my mouse pointer currently is, and I'm going to get a red die set to one on the apple tree just below it. So it's going to look like this. Okay, so I've got my first placement done. Obviously, once you place a card, you draw another card from the deck. So you always have two cards to work with. And now, of course, there are only five cards remaining in the deck. And by the way, it is suggested, if I haven't already said this, it's suggested that you cover the deck with some uh, card, uh, some blank card or whatever, because you're not allowed to look at the top card of the deck and use your memory to try to remember what the other side of it might look like. You're only able to work with the cards that are directly in front of you, not the top card of the deck. So you should either keep that away so you can't look at it or keep it covered with some sort of card, other card, so that you can't see what the trees look like. I should say that the, the sides of, of each card are basically the same, except that two of the trees are, are reversed. So, the, uh, for example, the other side of this card might be something like blue, yellow, red, blue, red, yellow. So there's all, there are two trees that are reversed when you look at the other side of the card. Uh, just a little bit of trivia, or if you are going to create your own print and play and want to make sure you're doing it right, you want to make sure that that, uh, that that rule holds true. So, anyhow, back to the game. So I've already used a red die and one purple die, so um, now I want to see if I can get some of these ones bumped up to threes. So, I'm looking for a blue-red combination that's not going to generate rotten fruit. Uh, there's blue, red, blue, yellow, so that's going to, uh, if I try to place that here, 
Uh, I'm not going to be able to match the yellow, so that's not good. Um, really want to try to get these dice bumped up to three. Uh, nothing there. No red. Uh, oh, wait a second. Um, oh, here we go. All right, there's something at least. So I, I'm if I place it here. I'm matching the yellow and the red on the uh, in the middle of this card, so I'd get ones on those on those trees, and I'd get a one on the lower plum tree, and the existing die, this existing purple die is going to get bumped up to three. So I could place this here. Is that the best I can do? Well, you know what? I'm just going to go with it. So I'm going to place this here. And that's going to use uh, another purple die, and a yellow die, and a red die. And then the existing purple die will bump up to three. So my score currently stands at seven. One, two, three, plus three is six, plus one is seven. And like I said, I'm trying to aim for 40 here. Uh, so I really have to, if you're going to do well, you got to get uh, a, a, at least a couple threes bumped up to sixes um at least two i would say to do halfway decent and then you know obviously try to get some more sixes if possible to uh, get even a better score than that okay so now all of a sudden i've got a lot of combinations to consider but again only if i want to do well only yellow red purple purple yellow red so, yellow, red, purple, purple, yellow, red. Uh, there's a match right there. So, I get a one and then two threes if I place that there. That's pretty darn good. Yellow, red, purple. If I want to get that up to a six, I need a purple, a red, purple, or a purple, red, or something like that. Red, purple, red, purple, yellow. So that's not going to match. Um, oh, and if you get a rotten fruit on top of where there's already a die, of course the die goes, you lose whatever's on the die, and the die gets replaced by a, a rotten fruit cube. So that's even worse than just uh, not matching a tree. Is, um, I think I'm just going to go with this. So I'm going to place that there. Yeah, that's going to get me a 1, 3, 3 there. Okay, so now I, my score is up to 12. And what's that? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 cards placed already. 2 there, so there's 3, three cards left in the deck. Um, 5 cards yet to place. Okay. All right, so what was I looking at here? I think it was like this. Yeah, so that only matches two trees. I think I like the arrangement uh, better this way. I'm going to take a, a gamble here. Place that. If I can just keep in my head what I saw here. Um, was that it? Yellow, blue, oh yeah, 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 just, okay, that's what I think I saw. So I can match yellow, I can match these five trees. See, yellow, blue, blue, red, yellow. That's what I'm thinking is the best bet. And then, of course, the top red of this, the apple tree in the top right corner is just going to land in this white space. So, okay, so this is going to generate, 
a yellow one, a blue one, a purple one. The purple one that's already there is going to go to a one. This red three is going to go to a six. That's what I'm going to go with, right like that. Okay, now you can see I'm already running out of dice here. So I've got to be careful, especially with purple. Okay, so now it's going to get even trickier. But again, I want to get another six. So I want to look to try to overlap some of these threes. Where is it? It's yellow, yellow. Yellow, yellow. Okay. Right there. I'm matching yellow, yellow, red, purple. Oh, yeah, I think that's pretty darn good. So now these two threes are going to get bumped up to sixes. Uh, but that'll be the... No, I'll still have... I'm still, I'm still in pretty good shape. So I think I am going to go place this right there. Okay, I got three sixes. That's looking pretty good. But I only have one die of each color remaining. And I think these are my last two cards now to work with. Okay, well, I, want, I really want to avoid having to use a rotten fruit. So I could place this here, for example, which would get me, I would use all the rest of my dice. I'd get a 1-1-1, one, 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 but because this red apple tree doesn't match this yellow plum tree in the bottom right corner, I'd get a net gain of zero. I'd get plus three points, minus three points for the rotten fruit. Uh, so... Um, that's an example of what you're trying to avoid. Let's try this card. Well, um, I see that. But you get those ones up to threes. You know what? I'm just going to go with this. Get those two ones bumped up to threes. And then I've got one card left, so this is it. Oh. Well, I could do that. I get three points out of that because I'm matching four trees, but. I only have three dice remaining, so that's worth three points if I do that. But I'm not overlapping any of my existing dice. Um, uh, there's something there. Could do that. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. So I'm getting, I'm bumping up. Oh, that's a nice, that's a very nice gain. So I get uh, I'm bumping up the blue and the well, I'm getting a blue and a red one, and then I'm bumping up these yellow, this yellow and red one to threes. So that's pretty good. I think that's what I'm going to go with. Is there anything I can do that's better that maybe results in rotten fruit? So what did I say? This that's worth three points. Is this it? Yeah, this is it. Okay, yeah. If I sit it in right there, then I'm uh, matching these two here and these and these two here. I think I'm going to go with that. That's probably going to be that is it. Uh, what does that give me? A final score of 41. Okay, so uh, that's uh, pretty decent. I'm not going to complain about that. Uh, actually, that's more than a pretty decent. Like I said, 40 or better is pretty good. What, what I didn't say here is that obviously I've taken this print and play game and made, uh, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know I like to take games and turn them and, and program them so I can play them on my computer, especially solo games. Uh, I write these programs for my own enjoyment, so I can't make them available because of copyright, especially since this game's about to be published. But like I said, 
there's not much to making a print and play of this if you want to, or you can wait for the, uh, the, uh, the game until the game's published so you end up with really nice cards. Uh, but um, for me, this is the way I like to play my solo games on my computer. Very easy to do it. Very simple game, but challenging, interesting, makes your brain work, and it's very quick. Uh, when I when you're not talking and and trying to present um, a playthrough uh, to an audience, games go by real quickly. So you you get a play in, see how well you did, and you try again. On the forum, the designer of the game, Mark Tuck, um, presents I think a weekly challenge. So if you want uh, if you want to get into that, you're uh, you can. Basically, he tells you. Use these nine cards for a game, and then use these other nine cards, the, basically the opposite sides, in this order for a second game. Add your scores together and see how well you did in competition with other players out there. This is Orchard, a nine-card solo game. I think it's great. I think it's worth your time. Take a look at it if you like playing solo. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Bye-bye.